For Crema Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today are authors Daisy Jones and Lucinda Holy to discuss their romantic novel titled Love You Madeline. Daisy, can you tell us what gave you an idea to write a novel in this innovative format as the characters exchange letters, some are in London, Cape Town, as well as Jobek? Did the formats make the writing process more difficult? Well, yes and no, because the idea for the book came from real letters that were written between me and Lucinda in the mid-90s. So we had those letters in a lever arch file. We both had a full set. I had all the letters that I'd got from Lucinda, plus she had photocopied my letters and I had photocopied her letters. So we were used to writing letters to each other. And that's where the idea for the book came from. In fact, we wrote the whole book in letters in the beginning and only later added scenes so we were quite comfortable with writing letters oh wow so are you trying to tell me that uh, this novel is based on on the actual lives of you ladies <laughs> uh yes and no <laughs> so it is true that we wrote letters to each other in the mid 90s and it is true that we were starting new jobs and that we were falling in love and being disappointed in love and spending a lot of time with our friends and missing our family. So that is all true. But the story and the characters are made up. So there is nothing in the book that actually happened in real life. So do you think the art of letter writing still matters in our digital age of instant communication? Oh, I wish it, I wish it mattered more than it did, but I think that the way Lucinda and I used to write to each other was almost like journal writing. So we would tell each other our news in the way that people share news in an email now or in a text. But we also were trying to understand some of the things that were happening in our lives. And we were trying to come to terms with some things and there were some anecdotes and stories that we wanted to tell. And so in a way, that kind of writing is more like the kind of journal writing that people do now, I think. So Lucinda, one of the messages I took from the novel is that people will go out of their way uh, in the name of love. Do you agree that it is an important theme of your work? I think going out of your way in the name of love is is a vital theme. I'm really glad that that came through strongly um, when you were reading it. Um, one of the characters actually, she's one of the, a very colorful character, Tony. She actually writes that. She goes like, are you prepared to die for love? Is that, is that actually what you're doing here? Because I, I don't know if I can help you anymore when, when the, the one character starts um, behaving really recklessly. Um, so yeah, it's, there's, a, there's a lot of distance. You people cross continents for love to find each other, between cities to find each other, um, and also just in their their mental space, they went out of their way. A lot of a lot of the, both of the sisters went out of their way for love. Interfering families who don't agree with the choice of partners also makes an appearance in, in the novel. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about this mm -hmm. dynamic because we saw it uh, in the case of Edward and Minky. Yeah, um, I mean, absolutely. Edward, poor guy. I mean, he doesn't even, he struggles to find a space where he can make up his own mind because of that, the background stuff. And, and I think to a large extent, how the relationships in his childhood then influenced his adulthood. And um, that was probably his big growth journey that he needed to go on was to, to try and find himself. Um, but I think we can all relate to that, you know, the the opinionated family members pulling in different directions and trying to influence our choices and our behaviors um, and ultimately finding that you need to find the courage to make the choices that make sense to you. And your novel deals uh, with close friendships uh, over long distances. Do you also think that this is a reality of life that many people have to deal with? I 
I think absolutely. I mean, I think that in our day, what we were aware of was people having long distance romantic relationships. But I think that with the world being so small now because of air travel and because of air travel being relatively cheap and because of people being kind of economic migrants, mm. people are separated from their children, their wives, their grandparents. I mean, I think almost all of us have someone we love who doesn't live in the same place as us. Mm, that is true. And if we go to the actual storyline in the novel, in the case of Mr. Ashford, who died, your characters are forced now to deal with the loss and the destabilization that comes with the loss. Can you tell us about that? So I think what we were trying to show in this book is that these girls are going through a big change because they're leaving home and they are moving cities and they're starting new jobs and they are meeting new people. And so there's a lot that's challenging for them and for anyone who leaves home for the first time. Mm. But what we wanted to do was also to have their father die at the beginning so that their foundation is very weak they are grieving him mm -hmm. and so everything that happens to them they are slightly weakened they're vulnerable because they have been through this loss so they, they're going through a lot of what's normal for young people when they leave home you know not having much money and having to wrap it a bit and not mm -hmm. having a great job and so forth but they are emotionally vulnerable. And so when they get hit with a real emotional problem, and both of the sisters do, both of them kind of hit a wall at a certain point, they have less emotional resources to deal with it. And it becomes a dangerous situation for both of them. They don't really cope and they actually, yeah, they're in proper danger. My favorite character in the book is Marie, Marie Gold. But I was a bit disappointed when Will came into her life uh, and caused a bit of a confusion. Who is your favorite character in the book? I, I love all of them, but I love Johnny. <laughs> he's a very good friend. Um, he's funny and he's fun, but he's also kind and he's really there for me, he, he really, he's living his own life, but he really is loyal to her. He really cares about her very deeply. Yeah, and what kind of conversations are you hoping will start after reading this, this novel? Thanks, that's a fantastic question. I think um, what I'd love to see is definitely people being able to see that actually long ago wasn't that different from now. Like the human need to tell your story to each other. The, the technology has changed, but the actual need to do it is identical. So um, we've been really surprised that in the feedback that we have received so far that quite a lot, much bigger um, span of age groups have been responding and connecting with it and identifying with it. So we weren't really expecting younger readers, like when I mean younger, I mean people in their early 20s, we weren't really expecting, we weren't aiming to engage with them. Obviously we wanted to, but we, we thought we'd probably be more likely to um, relate to people who, who were kind of our age in the 90s or at least present in the 90s. Um, and then we found that younger people have really responded positively. And, and I, I think what they're identifying with is that thing that you need to do, like be in the moment. And the letters are that. I mean, there's bits where the one character says, well, I've just phoned you, but you're a gym. So I'm just going to sit here and just keep writing to you until the phone rings. But of course, in reality, when she posts the letter, it's, it's over. But she's writing in the present. And I think that's what WhatsApp does. I think that's what a lot of the, the quick technology platforms that we use um, do. So I'm hoping that, that, that the conversations will include 
an observation of that fact that our, our human condition isn't that much different just because we we're old <laughs> everyone's been young ones and I think that's what people really identify with we'd like to see and hear opinions from from a broader than just South African audience but we we were writing it to be authentically South African so it's always lovely when people go oh, I really identified with that whole scene in Yeovil um, and the 90s scene, but that whole culture in Yeovil, it was such a vibe at the time and you really captured it. Or, like th That's a really nice kind of um, thing to hear, to know that we've actually reached and expressed what other people can identify with. Because I think the whole point of writing a book is to, to share it. You know, you want, if people don't relate, then what's the point? And who is your favorite okay. character in the book? And why? Um, that's a hard one because one of the things that I learned in the writing process is that to write any character, you have really got to love them. You've got to love them with all their flaws, everything that they're trying to be and failing at. Um, and you've got to give them like lots of air to breathe and be three dimensional. So, so we've invested a lot of love in all of them. But if I really had to choose, I would say Tony, um, who's the, you know, she's the counterpoint to Johnny uh, that Daisy mentioned. And I love her because she's rude and she is wild and she's such a, she's such a bunch of contradictions. Um, <laughs> so we had a lot of fun with her and she was a character that we really did share. Like there were other characters that Daisy and I kind of would take the lead on um, in terms of steering their narrative arcs and their emotional journeys but the, the, um there were a couple that we literally co-wrote and Tony is one of them so even though she's inspired by some people we know but Daisy and I created her we shared the inspiration and then we created her and took her to a new place and we had so much fun uh, writing her and trying to get into her head and picture her in various scenarios and she's really alive in 3D for us um, so that's my favorite, yeah. And is there anything that, that is important in the book that you wish to highlight for those who will wish to read this novel? I think what's exciting for us is that this book is different. As you said in the beginning, the form is different. There are some scenes, there are some letters, there are lots of different points of view. I think the other recommendation is that it is genuinely funny we really tried to put in a lot of humor and jokes and um it's kind of uh it's kind of cool and interesting because it's set in the 90s with um you know mixtapes and cds and waitressing in london and um telephone answering machines mm -hmm. but i think that the real selling point is that there's a lot of love in the book, a lot of different types of love. The, the sisters love each other. They mm. fall head over heels in love with certain men. There's a lot of love in their family. And, um, and also Lucinda and I love each other as friends. And we loved the writing process. We loved writing this book and we still love this book. So there's a, mm. I think you get a real, it's like brimming with emotion, this book. I think that when people read it, they feel the love, they remember that love, they are reminded of being that age when things are intense. <laughs> so I think it's, for us, we tried to make it like a, like a Richard Curtis rom-com. We were aiming for it to have the feel of Love Actually or Notting Hill or Four Weddings and a Funeral. That's what we were going for, kind of irreverent and unique and um, kind of funny, but with a lot of heart. And the difference here is that it's all South African characters. And it's we know the Jacarandas and Table Mountain and the airports in Cape Town and Joburg. So it's kind of even more real for us.
And lastly, what else do you think uh, the readers will get if we, they, they were to read this novel? I think I, I can only say what I hope because you, you, really, mm. you really don't know and every reader is so different and with different tastes and mm. they're at different places in their lives. Um, but I would hope a sense of resonance, like a sense of, I know that's what, when I really love a book, it's because I've been completely taken into the world of it and the characters of it and lost myself, but not to the point of being invisible. Like you, you lose yourself and you find yourself. At the, that those are my favorite books. That's what I call the excellent. Mm -hmm. So I would love for people to be able to lose and find themselves, to, mm -hmm. to resonate as human beings, as young people, because everyone who's reading was young ones. So that is a really is a universal theme. Um, to, to understand that vulnerability and that aspiration and that recklessness and that belief, um, to, to, to be able to kind of time travel a bit back to your own youth, but also not to be too present, to, to, to get lost in that story and those characters and then kind of put it down at the end and go, wow, I just went somewhere, you know, and, and I'm different coming out of it. That, that, would be, um, that would be first prize, I think, for both of us. There was Daisy Jones and Lucinda Holy in conversation with Polity about their novel titled Love You Madly.